Okay guys, welcome back. So over the past, I'd say a couple of weeks, um, a topic has arisen that I've been getting uh, questions about a lot and that's on grip size. Grip size. Matty, what influence does grip size have on the delivery, on the ball flight? Hmm. I think we've touched upon this um, before, but it's, it's definitely time for a refresher on it. Agreed. We just messed around with it with Ronnie um, in his last fit, and mm -hmm. it, it definitely had an effect on his, his ball flight. It, it does, but I think the thing that is interesting, and, and you know, hopefully we can show you guys something that reflects that here, is it doesn't do exactly, or it's, it's not a, a sort of black and white linear process. Right. It's not just as straightforward as small grips you know are easy to turn over and large grips are not there's mm -hmm. there's a sweet spot in delivery in there for every golfer in feel and also in weight and balance the grip is one of three components right uh, in the golf club we've got the head the shaft the grip so you know there's taper rates now that are uh, that's right that's a another big variable part of it as well big variable in that there's there's the weight of it that influences obviously the swing weight so there's, there's lots of things that go into the grip and I still really believe it's a, a far too uh, overlooked part mm. of the process. Most of the people just kind of pick up a grip, I don't know, in a display on the wall and go like, ah, I like the look and feel of that one, throw that on my Definitely, course. definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, my sort of view on it and my process is I'm, I'm always, and this comes with all the components that we're testing the bay, uh, I'm always thinking about is it enhancing mm. or is it is it kind of you know impacting in a negative way the, the delivery right so you know i always think of the three components what are they doing to enhance the the, the, the shot basically for yeah. that player um so that's really what we're going to look at today uh with matthew we're going to try undersized standard mid-size and jumbo cover the whole kind of spectrum yep with that we're obviously going to be changing swing weight along the way mm. um so we're going to do that with the the, the golf pride series we've got two of velvets uh, undersized standard and mid-size and we're actually got a, I'm curious I wanted to go 2G black because it is very very heavy uh, oh, we've okay. got our little digital right. uh, scale so I mean even just yeah what does that one weigh the big so guy? 71 I believe so we're so even heavier 73 so we're 30 plus grams between the smallest and the biggest yes. we're trying today yeah that's a lot quite a lot 30 grams I yeah. know yeah. so it'll be interesting to see how that uh, we've got a swing weight scale here and we'll, mm. we'll kind of report on the swing weights of them as we go. We're going to standardize the club. We've got a, a Just a ZX7. ZX7 yeah. uh, with the X100 in it. Uh, built it to your spec so we should see you know loft and lie coming in you know right about where we want it for you. So we are really isolating the, the yeah. influence of the grip. Just the grip. It's one of those things guys you know it's it's the cheapest by far mm -hmm. of true. all the components. Yeah, good point. So you know, don't get that one wrong and don't overlook it. Make mm. sure that you guys are really thinking about the implications of the grip uh, and spend some time, you know, getting comfortable with the grip that you really, really like. Yeah. Okay, okay. let's set a few with this guy. So we've got the undersize. Mm -hmm. It actually feels quite nice. <laughs> it's it's a strike, strike on that. I mean, I mean, a sample size of one, but I didn't hit a massive hook. I'm a shock. What a shocker. Oh, look at this. Very similar. It's a really nice shot as well. That's nice too. It's pretty good. Just a little bit of a draw. More than acceptable though. It's good too. That's nice. Interesting. Okay, good. All right, let's switch it out. That's nice. It's a nice one. Very similar to the first couple with the... Totally. That was lovely. Very similar. Mm -hmm. Good one. Yep. Stop. Okay. Quite similar. That's a beauty. Might be the best one so far of all the for sure shots, I think. Good too. It's a slight draw. 
good. That was lovely. Yeah, kind of so far feeling, feeling like pretty good with mid size, which isn't a shock because I play um, standard size, but MCC plus four True. with an extra wrap. So we're kind of in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Be really happy with that. That felt really good. I mashed that one. Jeez. Jumbo. Felt really good. That's a beauty. Yeah, when I do my best to just not, you know, think about it too much and just try to make an aggressive swing, I kind of feel like there's a lot of pop coming off the jumbo. That's nice. Yeah, lovely one. There's been some nice tight draws with this jumbo. You've, you've had the most control with this one, I think. Lovely swing. Made the transition well. <laughs> that was really nice. Yeah, lovely. It's a good one. Lovely. Some lovely ones uh, at the end there. A couple good undersides, yeah. All right, so first thing I'd love to dive into is, <clears throat> for you, what, did, what was the user experience going through all mm. four? Uh, uncomfortable with the undersize. It kind of just felt like the club head feels really heavy. Yeah. And just that I'm basically almost gripping an X100 without anything on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I kind of felt like I had to probably prevent it from hooking. Yeah. I don't know that I really needed to, but mm -hmm. I mentally was feeling like this thing is going to whip over, so yeah. I need to kind of hang on to the face a bit. Right. So I just don't think I was as consistent, and I probably, it sh kind of shows in the club head speed. I think I just kind of didn't go at it quite as fast. Definitely. So if we look at, yeah, I mean, we wanted to take out the, uh, the bias of being just the first club being hit. So, yeah. we, you know, we hit it last again, and there was a slight increase in speed, very similar efficiency. Uh, the second time around, if we look at the ball data, you definitely turned it over a little bit easier. Yeah. Uh, so the spin came down, the speed went up. But I think if we look at that compared to straight away, if I go into jumbo, I mean, we'll get, there's a two mile an hour difference. Wow. On club head speed, it's which quite is a bit quite, on yeah. seven iron's a lot. It's quite a bit. We did see you typically be a little less toe up with the jumbo, which is another um, interesting one. Any idea why that would happen? Face angle, really face ah. angle influences dynamic lie angle, so. Um, more open slightly and more toe down slightly. Yes, yeah. Yeah, quite interesting with that, with that grip. Any, any feeling that you got that made you go, you know, I can swing a little bit quicker here? It would be subconscious if it was. Yeah. Like I looked up a couple of times and just saw the ball coming up, as I said it to you, it just came off the face hot. Yeah. And it, it was just more speed. Um, yeah, it wouldn't have been anything conscious. To be honest, consciously, it, it just felt too big. Hmm. And I wouldn't want to play with a grip that big. Right. But in terms of the result, I mean, definitely swung it faster, uh, managed the face well. The results were good. So the, the, between the midsize and the, oh, and the jumbo, so the midsize probably felt the best? Probably felt the most. It's okay. the closest to what I actually have. Strikes were quite similar. Again, yeah, I was just, just looking at the, obviously, four yards of difference. Um, but really, it's just in the velocity. Di delivered loft was the same. Dynamic lie was the same. Um, face was fractionally actually more open. With mid size? Oh, oh, yeah. Huh. Both of those grips would deliver it the same way for you. Mm -hmm. But as I said, if we go to the, the two extremes here, or actually the mid size is actually more of an extreme. If you look at the path, uh, sorry, face. Um, wow, okay. So a full degree of face angle difference between the tiny grip and the mid size? Yeah. And, and actually more toe down as well. Mm -hmm. So there is some traditional wisdom leaking in here where, yeah, I, I can manage the face a bit better and keep it from hooking with the bigger grip. Maybe just not in the way that I thought it was. Though. Hold the club out in front of you with a very light grip, yep. right? And just squeeze it with your full, 
So what happens when you squeeze, you actually see the head slightly close, ever so okay. slightly. Yes, right? it does. So if you, if you lightly grip it, then really squeeze it, yeah. the head slightly shuts as you do that. It does. That's where I always talk about grip pressure. Mm. Uh, more than, you know, grip roll is, is definitely part of this for, for those who are familiar with gears and, and Enzo and things like that. But, um, you know, we, we kind of look at more of, uh, you know, the sort of closure rate metrics. If we look at closure rate on here, uh, undersize, undersize was... Definitely faster than midsize. Yeah, so if we look at there, degrees per second in closure, by far the highest yeah. with that. Your lowest was, was mid-size. And jumbo was close, obviously. Jumbo was very close as well. So grip pressure might be the one that people are overlooking a little bit. I think so, I think yeah. so. And that's where control and speed yeah. uh, are going to be influenced by the pressure input into the grip. Right. We certainly never want to be, you know, death gripping it, that's for sure. That's, you know, the tension that creates on forearms and things like that is, is not good. You know, we've seen that correlation. Um, actually, Super Speed Golf have done an amazing study on this uh, in terms of the amount of grip pressure the average golfer applies versus a tour player. Okay. The average golfer applies close to 70, you would say 70, 75% of their full amount of pressure that they can into a golf shot. The average tour player is more in the mid 50s. Wow. So that's the range, you know, grip, grip pressure is a large factor in terms of uh, influence and speed hmm. and, and obviously control as well. So why are tour players really good in the rough? They can control their face a little bit better. Uh, yeah. Why can they apply more speed when they need it? because they're only using about 55% of their actual you know, grip pressure and, and strength in the hands. So when they want to put more in, they can. They so have room. I think if anything we've learned, you definitely need to mess around with some different grip sizes. Yes. If you go for a fit, be open to asking, you know, if you play standard now, maybe ask to try a mid-size or something and see if it makes any difference. Without a doubt, make yeah. sure you're going somewhere where, where grips can be blown, you know, on and off. And like we did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it's towards the end, once you get to the, the standard specs. Guys, let us know what's, what's your thoughts uh, on this. Is this something that is maybe, you know, put a bug in your ear just to you know, go out and, and actually explore the grips a little bit more? Have you been somebody who just defaults to a, a specific grip, a Tour Velvet or a multi-compound, just, just because that's what you've always played. I think be open-minded and, uh, and, and being curious is a really, really good way to look at your equipment and where can you get those incremental gains, those little 1% of marginal improvement that, that really make a massive difference between yeah. you know, the, the two that worked best for you and the two that, that didn't. It's quite a difference. Yeah, if I had the performance of the undersize and the standard, I would have an iron that I wasn't super confident in. Yeah. Whereas the midsize and the jumbo, I would definitely You'd feel, feel a lot about better about, yeah. Love it, love it, good stuff. Okay, let us know your thoughts, guys. Really, uh, really like these types of tests. These feel yeah, like they're this, fun. this is us. This is a, you know, we're in our, our kind of comfort zone right now when we do these types of tests, showing you guys those little marginal gains that you can make to your own game. So we'll try and get more of these. I'm sure you guys would like to see that. Stay tuned for more and we'll see you again soon.